Hi there, Skid Evenstani, CEO of OneWire. Welcome to Open Door. Today we're going to go interview Joanne Wilson, who's the CEO and founder of Gotham Gals, a venture fund focused on women entrepreneurs throughout the country and in particular in New York. She's an incredibly interesting person, incredibly dynamic. You're going to enjoy the show. Let's go see what she's up to. I'm here today with Joanne Wilson, who's the CEO of Gotham Gal Ventures. Uh, and Joanne, you've been very successful uh, throughout your career. Uh, but before we begin, can you tell us a little bit about what your life was like growing up? Oh, great question. No one's even asked me about my life growing up. Um, we, I started out in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we lived there until I was about seven. And then we moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, my uh, mother was a teacher before she had us uh, and stopped working, and my father was an engineer. And both my parents were entrepreneurs. So, you know, my father started his own company, my mother started several companies. Now you're uh, an angel investor. Tell us about uh, how you got into this business. I mean, you raised a family. Uh, and then you said, you know what, I've done that, now I'm going back, and I'm going back at it hard and aggressively, and I'm going to make some investments. Take me through that, if you would. You know, I've had a really mixed career, and I always believe that all the dots connect. I was in this tech industry, and then the tech industry kind of slid off the map, and everyone was sort of figuring out what's next, and so I started blogging, and that blogging sort of led me to where I am today. And so I, you know, this audience started reading me, and I started hearing from entrepreneurs, particularly women, mm -hmm. um, and um, I was really watching what was going on in the next generation of the web, um, you know, which we refer to as Web 2.0, right. and I was watching Curb Media, and I was fascinated with what they were doing. I was reading the properties every single day. And I said to my husband, this is awesome. This is the future. This is what, how we're going to use the internet. And he's like, you should invest in them. Well, you've obviously made a number of other um, investments <laughs> yes. as, as well since that time. What, what do you look for when you're investing? I mean, at this point, it's really people. Yeah. People. Um, of course, that have already built a business, have proven some traction, they know how to build something, they put some good people around them. I think all of them have a serious fire in their belly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they're innate, innately they're, they're entrepreneurs at the core. Okay, got it. You know, I don't um, think most of, I don't think any of them sat around a kitchen table and said, we need to come up with an idea so we can have our own company. Now, in terms of, uh, I was reading somewhere where it says 70% of the companies you've invested in are women-oriented or women-started companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you see any difference in terms of, of, you know, the male entrepreneur versus the female entrepreneur? I mean, Fred would argue the point that all people build businesses that fill voids in their lives. Right. Um, I think women in particular build businesses that fill voids in their lives. And I also um, think women are much more team-oriented mm -hmm. than men. Um, and they are more realistic in regards to what their business can do, um, sometimes to the point where they don't see how big they could actually be. Whereas men have a very sort of... Uh, bravado uh, look at their businesses, um, which in many ways plays to the strength of the, for the investor. In terms of capital raising these days, that's evolved quite a bit. You see this crowdsourcing, mm -hmm. which is going on. Um, do you think it's gotten easier? What, what sort of advice would you give somebody that is just getting going, that's got a great idea, and they want to build a business? Well, I don't invest in ideas. I invest in real businesses. Sure. And so I think it's hard to have someone invest in your idea. Unless, of course, you're a second-time, third-time entrepreneur um, that you've already had success and most of those people would come back and give you some money on the next idea because they believe in your success and they know that you'll figure it out. Crowdfunding is the perfect marketplace for that yeah. because you look at Kickstarter and there is definitely some VC firms who have found companies who have been funded on Kickstarter and have been their next raise. And, which is why I don't invest in ideas. Like, I'm not smart enough to invest in an idea. If something, put something up on a crowd uh, funding site and you've got an entire crowd just yelling for this product or this idea, I mean, that says something. What, uh, what have you learned, um, what mistakes have you made that you've learned from? 
make sure that you develop a good relationship with that entrepreneur that there is they feel um, that they can reach out to you that they're in good times and in bad mm -hmm. that there's pure transparency um, so that when things go bad you know they want to call you and when things go good they want to call you sure. um, because you don't want to be hung out to dry you want to be there to help them you're just as interested in their success as they are and I think it's important that the person that I invest in understands that's what I'm interested in doing um, because it makes for a better partnership. Let's say that you were back at school and you were talking to your, the, the class of students. What sort of advice would you give them? Follow your heart. I'm a big believer in that. You know, you should love what you do every day. These kids, as they graduate from college, are saying to themselves, do I really want to be a banker? Mm -hmm. I don't think I want to be a banker. I want to make chocolate. Or I want to do something in fashion. Or I want to do something in media. Or I want to be an artist. Or I want to be a cobbler. And so in many ways we're returning to our roots, yeah. which I think is a great thing for the economy because the ultimate entrepreneur really um, is the one that's doing a lifestyle business. Yeah. Exactly. Right? So you run your own life, you run your own business, you make the money you want to make to feed your lifestyle and feed your intellect mm -hmm. at the same time. And I think we're going to see many more kids who are trying to figure out how to do that that are graduating from college. In terms of um, women that are, that, you know, have raised families that want to get back into the workforce, because there are a lot of them out there, uh, but they just don't know how to do it. What sort of advice would you give them? There's a million ways to figure it out. First of all, there's not. my guess is that somebody in your universe, um, in regards to your friends, mm -hmm. are working, right? And what are they doing? What are they looking for? What are they seeing out there? There are meetups. There are classes at General Assembly. There are places like Catch a Fire where you can get on and you can input your skills and you can be connected to a nonprofit in an arena of something that interests you that you could do a, a 30 hour job um, and then decide well that's interesting I really like that I want to do another one or you know that's an industry I would like to get into how do I figure my way into the industry there's conferences I mean the Women's Entrepreneur Festival there are so many women that come that are in their 45 to 55 that are trying to figure out how to get back into the groove you know, their providence and when someone says what's your resume like raising a family and managing a family is you know just as difficult as building a business and running a business and the skill sets in many ways are similar and there are opportunities for everyone out there I think the hardest thing for women coming back into the workplace is they have had this flexibility and freedom for 20 some odd years and they don't want to be trapped in a nine to five job but there are things out there there are opportunities and I think catch a fire is a perfect way to kind of jump start your business got you or your life got you well listen Joanne Wilson, uh, can't thank you enough, uh, and you've been incredibly successful. Uh, wish you continued success. Thanks for inviting me over. Thank you. You bet.